Okay, so welcome back to this next video in which we are discussing atherosclerosis. Okay, so what have we seen so far? We've seen that some initial injury occurs to the endothelial cells, okay? And there are many suggestions for what this could be. Hypertension, uh, chemicals, just too high circulating LDL levels, radiation, potentially an infection, but there's still uh, very scarce evidence for that, okay? And what happens is the endothelial cells start acting as though they need to produce an inflammatory response, basically, okay? So they start contracting to open up uh, gaps between neighboring endothelial cells which will increase vascular permeability and in also they start uh, putting molecules on their surface so that they can interact with white blood cells within the blood for instance monocytes within the blood okay and we're going to see other things that they can interact with as well in a moment okay so far we've looked at the monocytes these will come into the subendothelial connective tissue and differentiate into macrophages in addition just because of the increased permeability of the endothelium you're going to get LDL molecules coming from the blood into the subendothelial connective tissue and this is also where having high LDL levels will cause a problem because if you've got high LDL levels you're going to get more LDL coming into your subendothelial space than if you've got low LDL levels. Okay, right. Then what happens is these macrophages come in here and start causing havoc. Okay, they think that something terrible is happening in here. Whether it is or not, we don't know. Okay, and they start releasing superoxide molecules, which are these incredibly reactive molecules which interact with pretty much everything. Okay, and these uh, react with all the different things that are in LDL particles and convert this into a molecule that we just call oxidized LDL. Now which uh, modification to molecules within the LDL particle is the important one for it interacting with macrophages, we don't know. What we know is that oxidized LDL work, interacts much better with macrophages than non-oxidized LDL. Okay, so they pretty much ignore this, but when they see this, uh, they get upset, basically. So, firstly, when they see these oxidized LDL molecules, when they detect them, what that triggers is the activation of the macrophages even more, and they start calling for help, basically. They start releasing tumor necrosis factor alpha, which is an extremely important pro-inflammatory cytokine. Okay, the tumor necrosis factor alpha will go and act on the endothelial cells and make this response to injury worse. So it will make the endothelial cells contract even more, it will recruit more endothelials and make more endothelial cells dysfunction in this way. So you're going to get a whole positive feedback of the process. Okay, and what this means is that you're getting more and more macrophages coming into your subendothelial space and more LDL particles coming into your subendothelial space. And this will lead to the gradual swelling of the subendothelial space. Now, we also need to take into account the fact that these uh, macrophages are gradually building up a bigger and bigger cholesterol content because they're not just going to meet one oxidized LDL molecule, they're going to meet loads of the things and they're just going to build up and up and up and up their cholesterol content. Now, what do they do with all of this cholesterol? Well, basically, they do their best to store it. That's the only thing they can do. So what they do is they um, store it, basically, in huge, great um, storage droplets within their cytoplasm. Okay, so what happens to these macrophages is that they transform into these cells which are just enormous and contain these huge droplets of cholesterol like so. Okay, and these cells which were once macrophages which are just totally dominated by this droplet of cholesterol are known as foam cells. So the entire cell is called a foam cell and that's because of their histological appearance. They appear foamy basically and they have 
huge great cholesterol droplets within their cytoplasm. And although I've drawn just one, in reality it's multiple droplets. Okay, so this is a cholesterol droplet. Okay, so if you imagine, let me try and split this into multiple droplets, you can hopefully start to see how something like this would maybe appear foamy, okay, down the microscope. So that's what a foam cell is, basically. Uh, it's one of these macrophages, and also you can actually make them from smooth muscle cells as well, which we'll discuss in a moment. It's one of these macrophages which has um, taken up too much cholesterol and has been reduced to storing it in droplets within its cytoplasm. Okay, now this macrophage becomes totally unfit for purpose and is no longer uh, dignified with the name of a macrophage. It's now called a foam cell. Okay, so you start to build up more and more foam cells within this subendothelial space underneath your basement membrane of your uh, endothelium of your artery. Okay, and this starts to form you the atherosclerotic plaque. Okay, in addition, what starts to happen is some of these foam cells actually die, okay, because it's not very helpful for their um, life processes to have this huge store of cholesterol. So some of them start to die, and then what happens is they release this free cholesterol into the subendothelial space. So you start to get huge, great droplets of cholesterol forming in the subendothelial space that are known as cholesterol crystals, basically. So, let me start to draw what we're starting to get forming within our artery wall here. Okay, right. So, uh, let's start by drawing the endothelial cells. Okay, and now you'll have this massive sort of, uh, well, uh, deviation outwards here, which is going to be the starting of our forming of the atherosclerotic plaque. Okay, so this is the basement membrane here, in turquoise. Okay, and then sitting on the basement membrane, we've still got the endothelial cells. Okay, so I'll draw these here. And the endothelial cells over the atherosclerotic plaque, they're dysfunctioning. They've got holes in them. Okay, so I'll draw those dysfunctioning. And these other endothelial cells, they're fine. Okay, and here are their nuclei, like so. And then what we're getting forming in this subendothelial space, which remember is the space underneath uh, the basement membrane, is we're starting to get the formation of the atherosclerotic plaque here. Now, what does this consist of? Well, this consists at the moment of these foam cells, many, many foam cells in here. So you have these foam cells, like so. And also you're starting to get these droplets of cholesterol, free cholesterol, uh, forming within the subendothelial space, which are formed because foam cells have died, basically, and just released all of that cholesterol that was within them into the extracellular fluid. So this here, this is a cholesterol crystal, okay, and it's made up of just loads and loads of free cholesterol molecules, okay, whilst these cells that I'm drawing in orange here, these are the foam cells, okay, right, so these are the foam cells, and then, of course, surrounding this, you've then got the uh, internal elastic lamina, and then the tunica media, so let's try and finish this picture off, okay, so here is the internal elastic lamina in blue, okay, and I'll try and put the connective tissue, so this is the subendothelial space that is healthy everywhere else, okay, in red here, okay, but then it's hugely expanded, uh, where we've got this atherosclerotic plaque starting to form. Okay, and then surrounding that, we'll have the tunica media, then the external elastic lamina, and then uh, the connective tissue with the vasorum in. Okay, but we don't need to draw that yet. So, what's going to start happening then is uh, we're going to move on to the next stage of this pathogenesis. Okay, so another important thing is that the macrophages which have been activated by seeing the uh, oxidized LDL molecules, as well as secreting tumor necrosis factor alpha, one of the other things they start to secrete 
is something called platelet-derived growth factor, okay, or PDGF for short. So, these macrophages are going to start secreting this PDGF. And what does this stand for? This stands for platelet, that's the P. Uh, then we've got derived, and we should have a dash in between those. So platelet derived, and then GF, whenever you see uh, GF in an acronym like this, you should think growth factor. Okay, so these macrophages are going to be secreting platelet derived growth factor. Okay, and what this triggers is it triggers the migration of smooth muscle cells. Now, there's still a little bit of debate where these smooth muscle cells come from. Often people will say that they come from the tunica media, okay, which is this layer peripheral to the um, internal elastic lamina, okay, which is full of smooth muscle cells. Uh, however, there's also a body of people who will say that no, these smooth muscle cells that are so important in the pathogenesis of atherosclerosis, in fact, they come from precursors which are circulating within the blood. So, whatever the truth, you're getting smooth muscle cells migrating into the subendothelial space. Potentially, they come from precursors in the blood, or potentially they migrate from the uh, tunica media across the internal elastic lamina into the atherosclerotic plaque. But what seems to happen is the release of this platelet-derived growth factor from these activated macrophages in this forming um, atherosclerotic plaque, it drives the migration of the um, smooth muscle cells into that atherosclerotic plaque. Now, what do these smooth muscle cells do when they get into the atherosclerotic plaque? Well, they do behavior very unusual for smooth muscle cells. Okay, so here we have our smooth muscle cell, our SMC for short. And what's going to happen is it's going to start proliferating. So it's going to go from being one cell into being multiple cells, and that's very unusual for muscle tissue. Okay, muscle tissue doesn't usually proliferate, which is why you hardly ever hear about um, cancers of muscle tissue. Okay, so they start proliferating, but also uh, they start producing connective tissue like crazy. So they start secreting extracellular matrix, ECM, which isn't like smooth muscle cells at all. Smooth muscle cells are supposed to be contractile. They're also not supposed to be motile. So they've just migrated potentially from the tunica media into the atherosclerotic plaque, although this is still contentious as to whether they come from precursors in the blood instead. Uh, and then they've come into the atherosclerotic plaque here, and they've started to proliferate in response to the plate that derived growth factor, and they've also started started to take on a secretory role where they're producing extracellular matrix. Now, what does extracellular matrix consist of? Well, it's loads and loads of fibers, some protein, some carbohydrate in nature. And basically, it's the meshwork that holds all cells together, basically. Okay, so, in addition, some of these smooth muscle cells actually come into the atherosclerotic plaque and they interact with LDL molecules as well. So some of them will take on this secretory function and produce a huge amount of connective tissue. Some of them come into the atherosclerotic plaque and meet this bad guy, oxidized LDL here. Okay, so this is oxidized LDL. LDL which has reacted with um, superoxide and has gone bad. Okay, so here in pink, this is the uh, apolipoprotein B100 after it's reacted with superoxide. And these two can take up the uh, oxidized LDL. And of course, the problem with taking up repeated oxidized LDL molecules is that you end up with huge amounts of cholesterol within you. Okay, and they too end up converting into these blobs which have huge droplets of cholesterol stored within them, like so. Okay, and this is again called a foam cell. So I'll put its nucleus here. So this is a foam cell. So again, uh, the smooth muscle cells which are migrating into the atherosclerotic plaque, some of these will become foam cells with these large uh, stores of cholesterol within their cytoplasm. 
Okay, so they will also contribute to this core of the atherosclerotic plaque, which consists of foam cells and this growing cholesterol, uh, cholesterol crystal at the centre. Okay, and you won't just have one cholesterol crystal, you'll have other cholesterol crystals as well. Okay, so again, these foam cells formed from the smooth muscle cells, they can also die and contribute their cholesterol to the growing cholesterol crystal. Now, this sort of center with foam cells and cholesterol crystals, this is known as the lipid core of the atherosclerotic plaque. And we're about to see the other main structure which you have, which isn't shown on this picture yet, uh, which is going to be the fibrous cap, which will be formed by these smooth muscle cells which have come into the atherosclerotic sclerotic plaque and which have taken on this proliferative action and also this secretory function where they're producing extracellular matrix. So what happens is these smooth muscle cells end up lining the uh, top of this lipid core of the atherosclerotic plaque. Okay, so they go between the lipid core and the basement membrane and they basically make a cap over the entire lipid core, uh, protecting it and trying to seal it off from the blood because the last thing you want is this thing to break off into the blood. So they're trying to stop that from happening and they're making this cap over the top. Okay, so what you're going to form then is if I draw a bigger picture down here, okay, so you'll have the basement membrane here, which will have the endothelial cells sitting on top, which are dysfunctioning terribly here. So here's an endothelial cell, here's another one, and I've managed to draw those two next to each other, never mind. Here's another one, and we'll have a nice big gap between these two, then a nice big gap here, and a nice big gap here. And these are the villains. These are what have caused this entire thing. So I hope they're happy with what they've done. Right. And now underneath the basement membrane, we've now got the fibrous cap. Okay. So we've got a structure here, which is going to consist of many smooth muscle cells. So we've got these smooth muscle cells which have proliferated uh, and have taken on this secretory function of producing extracellular matrix here. And now you've got this very thick, dense connective tissue which they've produced, basically. Okay, and I'll show this in blue here. So all of this has been produced by these smooth muscle cells. Okay, and this is nicely enclosing the lipid core of the atherosclerotic plaque. Okay, and stopping it from rupturing and releasing that huge uh, drop of cholesterol into the blood. Okay, so this then, this is what's known as the fibrous cap of the atherosclerotic plaque. Okay, and then underneath that, what do we have? We have these huge droplets of cholesterol known as the cholesterol crystals. Okay, so here's a cholesterol crystal, here's a cholesterol crystal, well, that'll be enough cholesterol crystals. Then we have loads of these foam cells here, which are these cells which are just full up of um, cholesterol stored in droplets, and they're on their way to being uh, part of these cholesterol crystals, basically. They're on their way to dying and releasing their cholesterol into these growing cholesterol crystals. So in orange, let's have the foam cells. Okay, and then we also have the macrophages as well, which are uh, coming in from the blood continuously uh, by monocytes differentiating into macrophages. And then those are producing the superoxide that's continuously converting LDL, which is also continuously coming in into oxidized LDL and continuing the entire process, making it worse and worse and worse, basically. Okay, so here are the cholesterol crystals here in yellow. And then let's have some of these macrophages, which are the active portions, which are secreting the tumor necrosis factor alpha and maintaining uh, the endothelial cell activation. Okay, so this is tumor necrosis factor alpha. They're also secreting the platelet-derived growth factor, PDGF, which is responsible for more smooth muscle cells either migrating from the tunica media or potentially coming in from the blood from precursors. 
okay? So potentially either of these mechanisms. I think it's preferred now the idea that they're coming from the Tunica media, but potentially they're coming from precursors in the blood. Okay, and these can again form foam cells and also they can contribute to the fibrous cap. Okay, right, and of course you're also getting the LDL coming in and the macrophages are also secreting the superoxide. So these are secreting O2 minus dot and that doesn't show up at all. Uh, and it should show up because that's an incredibly important part. So let's have this in vivid purple here. That's the superoxide. And then we're also getting the LDL molecules coming in, which are being converted then to oxidized LDL by the superoxide molecules and continuing this whole process on. Okay, right. So this is the basic division of these atherosclerotic plaques then. You have the um, lipid core here, which consists of these cholesterol uh, crystals here, along with these foam cells and the active macrophages. And then we've also got this fibrous cap around the outside. Now, I just want to discuss other pathways that exist alongside this and potentiate what we've seen so far, because we haven't discussed the complete story yet. We haven't discussed the involvement of platelets, and we haven't discussed the involvement of T cells, but we have now seen how uh, you can form an atherosclerotic plaque, and the platelets and the T cells are only going to sort of add into this pathway. They're going to encourage this pathway along, if you like. Okay. So, let's discuss them now. So we'll start off with platelets. So basically, platelets also bind to these activated endothelial cells, okay? So platelets are these little fragments of cells which are produced by megakaryocytes within the uh, bone marrow, okay, and are chucked off into the blood and are important in uh, hemostasis, okay? So they will bind to these activated endothelial cells, and they are also a source of platelet-derived growth factor. In fact, they're the source after which uh, platelet-derived growth factor is named. So they will also help in the migration of smooth muscle cells, either from precursors within the blood or from the tunica media into the atherosclerotic plaque. Okay, uh, so that's platelet's contribution to this. They're going to help bring these smooth muscle cells into the atherosclerotic plaque, producing more foam cells from those smooth muscle cells and also producing this fibrous cap. And now let's discuss T cells. Okay, so this portion is very ununderstood, okay? So you have T lymphocytes circulating within the blood and some of them will interact with these activated endothelial cells. Okay, so this is a T lymphocyte, and basically these T lymphocytes then come into the atherosclerotic plaque, and they won't come in, you know, at this late stage. They'll have come in at the early stage as well, okay, wherever the early stage has gone now. They will have been activated right back here as well, okay? And what happens is these T cells coming into the subendothelial space, what they're going to do is they're going to release all sorts of cytokines which are going to make this worse. Now, if you know anything about immunology, you'll be saying, hang on a moment, you need to tell me what these T cells are activated against. Well, the answer to that is we don't know, basically. We do not know whether the T lymphocytes that come into atherosclerotic plaques are activated against some specific antigen or whether they're just T cells which are activated, we don't know what antigens they're detect, uh, well, which they're directed against, or whether it's just random T cells that have come in and have been activated by all of the inflammatory chemicals that are all over the place in an atherosclerotic plaque. Okay, so we don't know if they actually went through the normal checkpoints of the activation of the adaptive immune system and are therefore. Uh, directed against some specific antigen which is present within the uh, wall of the artery here, or whether they are 
just becoming non-specifically activated by uh, all of the inflammatory chemicals that are present within the subendothelial space, and therefore they could be targeted against any old uh, antigen that's completely irrelevant here. But if you like the theory of it being an infection, then this makes sense because you're now launching an adaptive immune response against the infection and these adaptive immune cells are moving into the site to help out with the obliteration. Okay, But as I say, it's still contentious whether there is an infection underlying atherosclerosis. But the way the immune system is launching does look as though the body really does believe that there is something there. Okay, right. Uh, so, what do the T lymphocytes then do once they're in here? Well, firstly, they secrete uh, interferon gamma. Okay, so if we've got a T cell here, okay, like so, uh, it's going to um, secrete interferon gamma, okay, IFN gamma for short. So this is interferon gamma. And this interferon gamma is going to activate the macrophages uh, even more. So remember, the oxidized LDL activated macrophages, which then secreted tumor necrosis factor alpha, secreted the platelet-derived growth factor, okay, um, which caused the potentiation of this entire vicious cycle. Interferon gamma secreted by uh, T cells is going to activate macrophages even further. Okay, so this is going to activate the macrophages to secrete more TNF-alpha, secrete more superoxide, uh, secrete more platelet-derived growth factor, and it's just going to make everything worse, basically. So they're going to secrete more TNF-alpha, they're going to secrete more superoxide, O2 minus dot, and they're going to secrete more platelet-derived growth factor, which is going to make the whole thing potentiated even more. Okay. In addition, uh, the T cells also secrete another growth factor which is capable of recruiting smooth muscle cells either from the tunica media or from precursors in the blood, whichever it is. And this is transforming growth factor beta, basically. So TGF beta for short. So this stands for transforming, that's the T. And then the GF is growth factor. So transforming growth factor beta, okay? And this, again, will act on smooth muscle cells and cause the migration into the atherosclerotic plaque, therefore providing another source of smooth muscle cells to become foam cells and also providing more smooth muscle cells to make the fibrous cap and therefore, again, potentiating the formation of the atherosclerotic plaque. Okay, so that's now uh, the pathogenesis of atherosclerotic plaques complete. Let's now discuss the consequences of the formation of atherosclerotic plaques. Okay, so the key consequences are that you can occlude blood vessels. Okay, so the formation of one of these atherosclerotic plaques can lead to the occlusion, the narrowing of blood vessels. And the narrowing of blood vessels is uh, called stenosis. So stenosis is the fancy word for uh, the narrowing of blood vessels. And when stenosis is due to the formation of an atherosclerotic plaque, we call it atherosclerotic stenosis. Okay, now... If this occurs in blood vessels within the heart, okay, so if it occurs within the coronary circulation, then this can cause a condition known as angina pectoris, okay, or exertional angina pectoris specifically. So basically what happens in exertional angina pectoris is that the coronary circulation becomes narrowed, okay? So let me show this. So let's say this is our coronary artery, and now we've got a massive great atherosclerotic plaque within the wall of the coronary artery, which means that it looks like this, rather than, let me draw a healthy coronary artery, which looks like this. Okay, so you've got a huge narrowing of the lumen of the coronary artery. Now, 
And what will gradually happen is the coronary artery will dilate as much as it can, okay, so that blood, as much blood as possible, can still make it to the heart. And you will still be alive, okay, so it won't have narrowed so much that the heart cannot survive. The problem is that it will only be able to deliver enough blood to the heart when you are not exercising. So when you're at rest, your heart will be getting enough blood to survive, basically. But if you suddenly start exercising, then the blood's demand for, sorry, the heart's demand for blood, for oxygen, is going to go up because the heart has to beat faster, so it has to do more work. Okay, so the demand for oxygen, the amount of oxygen and glucose it's going to require, but more specific, more importantly, oxygen, it has a nice store of fatty acids and uh, glucose molecules that it can use to metabolize. Uh, its demand for oxygen is going to go up, okay? And in the normal healthy person, what would happen is your coronary arteries would dilate to meet this increased oxygen demand for the heart. But because of the atherosclerotic plaque, your coronary arteries are already as dilated as they possibly can be. So they can't dilate anymore. Okay, so then suddenly you have a problem. You can't increase your blood flow to the heart and the heart requires more oxygen. Okay, so what starts to happen is the heart becomes, um, well, it becomes hypoxic, basically. It doesn't get enough oxygen that, for its demands, and the concentration of oxygen will fall, and when this happens, you'll start to feel a crushing chest pain. So angina is derived from the word uh, for crushing, and pectoris is derived from a word that means chest. So this means a crushing pain within the chest. Okay, so you get a crushing chest pain. And basically, it's the body warning you that you need to stop uh, do exercising, basically. Because if you don't, your heart is going to start dying. You're going to have a myocardial infarction. It's the warning sign that you're about to have a heart attack, basically. Okay, so in exertional angina pectoris, you get uh, crushing chest pain whenever you try to exercise. And basically, it's your body warning you that if you continue trying to do this exercise, you will uh, have a heart attack, basically. Okay, so that's what happens when you get stenosis of the coronary circulation. And if it gets bad enough, clearly it, it can lead to myocardial infarction, okay, where a portion of the heart actually dies because of a lack of blood supply, basically. So infarction means death due to a lack of blood being supplied, okay? So myocardial means pertaining to the myocardium, infarction means dying due to lack of blood. Okay, so that's often abbreviated to an MI. In addition, what can happen is that um, Atherosclerotic plaques in large blood vessels, such as the aorta, okay? Um, now, the aorta is a massive great blood vessel, so having a little atherosclerotic plaque in it doesn't really do much, because it's not a big issue, because the, the lumen is so wide anyway that you're not going to hugely stenose that lumen by having the atherosclerotic plaque. It's significant in the coronary arteries because they're quite small, but in the aorta it's not. However, what can then happen is occasionally, despite the effort of the fibrous cap, occasionally atherosclerotic plaques can break off. Okay, so if you've got an atherosclerotic plaque here, what can happen is the entire thing can sort of break off, and this bit can go flying off, basically. Okay, now that is dangerous. Because if this bit goes flying into one of your coronary arteries, maybe, uh, it could completely occlude a coronary artery, okay? Then it would completely suddenly stop uh, blood from getting to a certain area of the heart, okay? And that will cause myocardial infarction, a heart attack. Or this could go flying up one of your carotid arteries up to the brain, and then it could get stuck in some small blood vessel and completely occlude blood supply to a certain area of the brain. Then a certain area of the brain dies, okay? And then that's called a cerebral um, infarction. 
Okay, so when you get uh, a portion of the brain dying due to lack of blood supply, it's called cerebral infarction, or it's called a stroke, basically. Right, uh, so uh, strokes and heart attacks are both complications associated with atherosclerosis, and these kill a lot of people each year. And as I say, that's how atherosclerosis kills people through uh, stroke and myocardial infarction mainly. Okay. In addition, um, the site where the ruptured atherosclerotic plaque has broken off from, uh, this is now liable to have uh, thrombosis occur over it. So basically, what will now happen is the mechanisms which become employed when you've got a cut in the side of one of your blood vessels. So when you've cut yourself, your blood clots, okay? So you get a hemostatic plug forming that blocks you, uh, your um, blood vessels from continuing to hemorrhage, okay? Now, when you've suddenly chopped a huge lump off the side of your artery, and you've got this huge exposure of connective tissue to the blood, Connective tissue is what activates the hemostatic pathways. So you'll get all of hemostasis activating on top of this area, and you can form a massive great hemostatic plug within your artery, basically. So if you've got our artery here, like so, what you can form is a massive great hemostatic plug here. Now when you form a hemostatic plug like this inappropriately in an intact artery, it's not called a hemostatic plug, it's instead called a thrombus. And instead of the process being called hemostasis, it's called thrombosis. Okay, so, uh, the formation of one of these thrombuses in the middle of an artery can then completely occlude blood flow through that artery. If this occurs in the coronary circulation, uh, or in fact in the um, cerebral circulation, in the blood supply to the brain, this can cut off blood supply, and again, it can cause heart attacks or strokes. Okay, so those are the main deadly consequences of uh, atherosclerosis. Okay, so that now concludes our discussion of atherosclerosis.